All right. So now we can like, get into the, the good stuff here about what we found out. And, and as Aaron said, we were, we were measuring environmental data in addition to just the, the dust and the particulate matter and the gases. So, so what I have up here is a comparison of the average temperatures. And we have the data for closed and open curtain situations and then for our, our two scrape barns and our two pack barns. And I'm going to take a second here and, and just define how we how we um, define closed and open. There's a lot of variability in how producers manage their barns, and I don't need to tell that to you guys. But what we decided to define as closed is anything when the curtains were less than five feet. So it could have been one or two foot opening, it could have been completely closed, but generally in the closed curtain situations, there was some airflow going through those, those barns. And then open curtain, obviously, is anything that was greater than five feet. So, um, Really, um, this, this is air temperature, um, and there just really was not a lot of difference between the ambient air temperature outside the barn and the air temperature inside the barn, less than five degrees um, on, on both our, our scrape and our pack systems and in both the closed and the open situations. And I, I do want to emphasize that that isn't necessarily what the animal feels, because on a summer day, the animal is, is getting some uh, protection, I guess, from direct solar radiation, or on a cold winter day, if you have your curtains pulled up a little bit, they're getting some protection from the, the convection that we, we get from a wind chill. So, so these are just air temperatures, but air temperature, really not a lot of difference. And when we looked at the average relative humidity in the air, we saw the same thing. Just not a lot of differences between um, what's inside the barn and what was outside the barn in both closed and open situations, and also in, in both our pack system and our scrape system. And then when we look at, at the average airflow through the barn um, in relation to the ambient airspeed, um, again, we have our, our curtain openings are, are closed in our open situations. Um, under a, a closed situation, and again, we have a lot of variability here, we have a lot of variability between our barns. Um, but when we have an open barn situation, or an open curtain situation, there's really not a lot of difference across all of our, our barns have about the same amount of airflow going through. And then to direct your attention here to this last column, this is the air changes per hour, per mile an hour of wind speed. And so under a closed curtain situation, we're, we're getting about three air changes per mile an hour of wind speed, whereas under an open curtain situation, we're getting sorry, about 15, which really demonstrates what a powerful tool that curtain is for the producers. And you can uh, really adjust it and make a lot of differences on a, um, on a cold day or a hot day to get that air moving across across the cattle. And then the other thing that I would just point out is that this is again our north wall um, airspeed and, and not our south wall. We did have a lot more variability in that south wall because of that uh, back drafting that Aaron was talking about. So what does this mean for somebody that's actually managing cattle in a modest barn? Well, it's a naturally ventilated barn. It behaves like a naturally ventilated barn. You know, not a lot of difference between the air temperatures and the relative humidity inside and outside the barn. But again, it doesn't necessarily reflect exactly what the cattle feel, but the air temperature itself is not much different. Um, you can get a lot of, of difference here on the uh, curtain position. It really impacts that air, air flow through the barn. It's a very powerful tool for the producers. And then there's a lot of variable wind speed and direction in that south wall. So, conti so continuing on, we looked at then what the uh, what did the gas concentration data tell us? What do we know now about the environment in the barn that affects um, the cattle themselves, the producers? Can you still hear me okay in the back? Well, we come back to those factors that affect uh, gas production and, and air quality in these facilities, and there are a lot of them, and we couldn't control for or, or control for all of them, especially when it came to the diet of these animals, which we know is a big factor. But what we did look at in terms of these gas concentration values that we, that we looked at were some of the environmental effects, uh, animal activity, and then of course the manure management style. What I'm showing here in this graph are seasonal mean, um, basically exhaust concentrations of ammonia in these facilities. And so I've plotted these data, sorry, I've plotted these data against 
the average temperature for these seasons. So remember, we spent about eight months at each facility, and so there's that many dots here on this graph of eight times four. So the blue diamonds on this graph here are uh, the data that we collected at the PAC system, and the red are the, the combined data that we collected at the, at the scrape systems. For the scrape systems, our, our seasonal means average between about 0.5 ppm and, and close to 4 ppm. So these kind of types of concentrations are on the low end of, of what we see in a lot of other confinement facilities for livestock. Uh, but we also noticed that there really wasn't any relationship with temperature. Now, with the scrape system, where you are removing the manure on a very, on a more frequent basis, what you're basically looking at for ammonia production is from that fresh manure, the fresh urine deposition, um, somewhat the fresh feces material. So that material is continually being removed and continually being replaced. And so, while we thought we'd saw, see a bit of a temperature influence, we really didn't notice anything um, with the scrape data. PAC system, we saw, well, first of all, a lot more variability in that data and those seasonal means, but then we did see a tendency towards a relationship with temperature. But I want to point out that that was just really a tendency, and I think more important in this is how much, how variable it can be. For a given temperature, pretty wide range of what, as to what that air quality was in those PAC system barns. Now, with the PAC system, you have the fresh fresh manure deposition happening all the time too, right? But you still have that pack system, which is a source of nitrogen and a microbial source of nitrogen. So there's a lot more factors or a lot more complexities to ammonia production in that pack system. And that's, that's how we explain this wide variation. Hydrogen sulfide, again, we looked at the relationship between our seasonal mean hydrogen sulfide concentrations with temperature. And there's a more distinct relationship in temperature between these two systems, but also you see uh, some, uh, a greater difference between uh, what we measured in the PAC systems versus the scrape systems. For both types of systems, we did see a relationship with temperature. With the scrape systems, the way to look at it is essentially for every degree Fahrenheit rise in temperature, we had one ppd, or one part per billion rise in hydrogen sulfide. With the PAC systems, for every degree Fahrenheit rise, degree Fahrenheit rise, we had a five to six part per billion rise in gas concentration of hydrogen sulfide. Now, these concentrations that we're talking about, uh, the scales from zero to 450 parts per billion, those that those types of concentrations of hydrogen sulfide, they do contribute to odor, but in terms of the uh, health and safety health and safety concerns we hear about hydrogen sulfide, these aren't, these aren't close to those levels. So these are, you know, we're, these levels are more um, an issue from one of the, that older side of things. Again, we see, we see some lower values for the scrape systems and we see some higher values for the pack systems and again, more variability for those pack systems. Again, it, it did make sense to us because hydrogen sulfide is is we look at it as a product of anaerobic breakdown. Breakdown in the absence of oxygen. And so when you have that pack system, you have that uh, manure that's going to be trapped in there, not, as, not exposed to as much oxygen. So there's more potential for that hydrogen sulfide production in there. And again, that's a, back, that's a microbial process and a very complex biological environment in that pack system. And so from, uh, from biology, we know that those microbes are very sensitive to temperature. So this relationship with temperature and the difference between systems um, comes, back, comes down to that, uh, that PAC environment. And I'll, I do want to mention as well that those, the PACs that were in these barns, you know, they were also of variable age, materials, and, and heights. So again, just another factor that led into some of that variability. One of our advisory council um, members was really curious as to well, how, do, how does the air quality change based on time of day? So I wanted to quickly show you those, those slides. What we did was we took all our concentration data together and grouped it based on the hour of the day, from midnight to noon, back to midnight. And what we see with our ammonia concentrations is we see two peaks <coughs> happening between 7 and 9 a.m. 
And then in the early evening, around eight, well, not early evening for me, but eight to nine in the evening. And so what's happening at those times of day? Well, we have uh, cattle being fed, right? We have more cattle movement. Whenever cattle get up, what's the first thing that they do? We have that happening. And then we see a slight, slight increase as well over the day. So again, that temperature influence is, is coming into play as well as just the animals being more active through the day. I do want to point out that these levels when we kind of look at it as an overall average, right, of all the data, very similar between three of our barns. One was a little bit higher, but we're only talking of a difference of two parts per million, which from an ammonia standpoint really isn't, isn't that, uh, that large. With hydrogen sulfide, we saw peaks happening at the same time of day, again, 7 to 9 in the morning, 8 to 9 in the evening. Some different levels in the scrape systems and pack systems, which we saw in that, in that temperature data as well. With the, even though this, with these levels in the scrape systems were very low, we still saw those peaks. With the pack system, you notice that this peak in the evening gets a little bit higher. Again, we, had, we attribute that to that temperature increase over the course of the day as well. With, with hydrogen sulfide, remember I talked about it being an anaerobic breakdown, so we think a lot of uh, the, the animal activity effect is maybe some action on that floor surface or on that pack surface, contributing to its release into the air. And so, if we just look at some very basic averages, and, and these are just basic averages, uh, we see that for ammonia, our concentrations were, were fairly consistent in a, in a PPB or PPM basis across these facilities, the scrape systems and the pack systems. For hydrogen sulfide, again, we see, we see a difference between the scrape systems and the pack systems. Now, these are just averages. The slides that I just demonstrated on the temperature influence animal activity, they create a lot of variation around these averages. If we look at these numbers in comparison to um, some for open lots, our numbers are maybe on the, uh, are on the higher end or maybe a little bit over what was measured, for example, for ammonia over feedlots in Texas. This 3,000 parts per billion was measured during still air conditions. And hydrogen sulfide, there is uh, reported measurements of 2 to 37 parts per billion in the center of feedlots. So our numbers, again, are a little bit higher, but remember, we're talking about a confinement facility. And so whenever you have a reduction in that airflow that's going through that through there or over those animals, you are, of course, going to have some slightly higher concentration. 